Good morning, everyone. We will be following the order of service as you have it in Divine Service 1. We make our beginning this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and their praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning, and though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all of your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42. For a long time I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their vegetation. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light and rough places into level ground. These are the things I do. I do not forsake them. They are turned back and utterly put to shame who trust in carved idols, who say to metal images, you are our gods. Hear, you deaf, and look, you blind, that you may see. Who is blind but my servant, or deaf as my messenger whom I send? Who is blind as my dedicated one, or blind as the servant of the Lord? He is many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. The Lord was pleased, for his righteousness' sake, to magnify his law and make it glorious. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this Sunday is from Psalm 142. With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before him. I tell my trouble before him. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. In the path where I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. 
Look to the right and see, there is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison that I may thanks may give thanks to your name forever. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson for this Sunday is from Ephesians chapter 5. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light, therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel lesson for this Sunday is from the book of John, chapter 9. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground and made mud with his saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, Go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus, made mud, and anointed my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes and I washed and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God. He does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs. And there was division among them. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight, and they asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? The parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus as the Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, 
Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered him, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why? This is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and you would teach us, and they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who is speaking to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those who do not see may see, and those who see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard these things and said to him, Are we also blind? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would, know, you would not have guilt. But now you say, We see. Your guilt remains. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A secular news website recently shared the following headline, Is God Angry With Us? It ran complete with a a picture of Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, depiction of the Father uh, reaching out with his divine finger. And I think it's a natural question. In the face of disease, in the face of wrath, in the face of darkness, the question often is asked, okay, who messed up? Who made God angry? In John chapter 9, our gospel lesson for today, the same question was asked. Who sinned that this man was born blind? These questions all boil down to kind of the same question. Can we know the root cause of our suffering? Can we know who sinned? Can we know who messed up everything for everyone else that this plague or this disease or this calamity has come our way? This new disease arrived first in atheistic China. China is not just secular, it is officially and doctrinally Marxist. Therefore, atheism is explicitly taught in the schools. China is a country that rips crosses down off of church steeples and puts Muslim minority groups in concentration camps. And I'm not talking about 40 years ago, I'm talking about right now. But this new disease did not stop in China. It moved on to Iran, a conservative Muslim nation, which is in many ways the polar opposite of China. Then it moved on to Italy, and then throughout Europe, which has deep Christian roots but has become unfaithful and has embraced secular humanism. And now I fear our nation will become the next epicenter if current trends hold. A nation with hundreds of thousands of Christian churches. So who sinned? Is God angry with us? This disease is an equal opportunity plague. Atheists in China, Muslims in the Middle East, 
secular Scandinavians and Bible Belt Christians in the American South, this new disease has no prejudice. And it seems that there is not even a hint of an answer to that question, at least not in human terms. But even if there was, that answer would probably be wrong. Jesus already answered this question. Hear once again these words from our gospel reading in John chapter 9, answering the question, who sinned? It was not that this man sinned, or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent us while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. The answer is wrong question. We don't get to ask why, or who, or why now? The answer is that Christ is the light in the dark world. I shared a picture on my personal Facebook account of a nurse anesthetist at a Detroit Metro Hospital who had been obviously crying her eyes out. The caption of her post that she had shared read that she had intubated 15 patients between the hours of 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. on her Thursday night shift alone. That means in a six-hour period at just one Detroit Metro Hospital, 15 people needed immediate breathing assistance. This is not a drill, she wrote on her account. This has just started and I am feeling overwhelmed she says. We have been so blessed for so long in our nation that we have forgotten that there is true darkness in this world. So here once again these words from our Old Testament reading in Isaiah, verse 16, And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know, in paths that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, I do not forsake them. I want to make something clear as your pastor. The next coming months, the Old Testament is going to start making a whole lot more sense to us. In these many decades of peace and prosperity, it has been so hard for us to identify with passages like the one just read. Plagues, or famines, or being exiled into a faraway land, these things are so distant to us in terms of both time and experience. In the 20th century, we beat all major infectious diseases and we grew complacent but now we will relearn hardship relearn sacrifice relearn sharing and loving and helping others in need we will relearn what it means to think of others before we think of ourselves and we will begin to see the light in darkness for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the world. Walk as children of the light. It is only in the midst of darkness that we can understand what true light is. A flashlight is dim and unimpressive when you turn it on and hold it under the noonday sun, but it is useful in a dark hallway at night. We may be entering a period of darkness where orienting ourselves to the light of the Lord will become more important than ever. There is nothing like suffering to get our attention. No number of 
public service announcements or reminders or informative brochures ever really grab our attention until the suffering arrives right here at our doorstep. And this can serve as a wake-up. Wake us up from spiritual slumber. Wake us up from Christian cruise control and allow us to receive this light in the midst of darkness. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So let's avoid the unhelpful questions of who sinned, why now, is God angry with us? But know that God will be glorified even through this. We don't know yet how bad this will be, but this too shall pass. Life will go on. I've been thanking God every single day in prayer that children seem to be largely unaffected by this. So far, seasonal flu continues to be a greater danger to our children than this new virus. I thank God for this mercy, if nothing else, and for Jean and I personally in our daily prayers, we are thanking God each day for our children's happy play. At some point in the near future, this will begin to pass and we will pick up the pieces and we will do better next time. But let's use this period of darkness to notice again the bright light in our lives. Notice again Christ's own suffering on our behalf. Notice again that victory over sin, death, and the devil. And what that really means, it means something. Because as fear grows, we are reminded that we are his already. We are saved already. We are in his hands even now. For I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Father, we pray for your mercy in our country and throughout the whole world. We pray for all those affected by this new disease. We pray for those also who are being affected by the economic shutdown, which is occurring both here and in many countries. We pray for those whose paychecks and livelihoods are in peril. Lord, we pray that you would uh, give mercy and provide for all of our needs on a daily basis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now hear the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>